aiming at about 43, 44, 45 seconds. Um, let's take a look here, and according to, um, okay, so now according to this, I am streaming. Uh, 43, four, uh, you know, we should have a next clock up or something, but anyway, um, so now it's been about 20 seconds since I started streaming. Hopefully the stream is up and running. I'm going to give it another uh, few seconds just to make sure that it, it is up and running. Uh, so we're now up at 30 seconds since when I think I started. According to OBS, I've been streaming for 34, 35, 36 seconds. Um, according to, uh, to uh, Twitch, it doesn't tell me how long I've been streaming. Um, among other things, it's bad at everything, pretty much. Uh, if you want to build a platform better than Twitch, easy. The difficult part would be to build one that's worse than Twitch. Okay, I think we're going to continue with what we were doing earlier. Uh, earlier, we had uh, we were going to try to take the data that we'd found about uh, centers of populations, convert it uh, into something usable that people could see, but we ran into the issue that uh, some uh, some dependent nations are showing up as well, uh, because the way the uh, the GPW survey did things, they treated uh, ISO codes as being separate nations, and that includes ISO codes of uh, you know places that are not actually sovereign nations. So actually, it did occur to me before we uh, continue. Uh, we actually, it's probably useful to have one that does include dependent territories before we do anything about it. So I think we already have one of those, but let me go ahead and, and oh, let me see if I actually forgot. I might need to re-SSH F-A-S-S-H-F-S. S-S-H-F-S. No, it looks like I'm, I'm fine. Um, Okay, and I think we already have one, but let me just see if we can run this, and uh, again, it's going to take like a fraction of a second, so it's not a big deal. Um, unless, of course, I'm telling it what to... Uh, and I think what I can do here... Okay, this is fine because it goes to a fixed file. This is fine because it goes to a fixed file. And, and honestly, the only reason this doesn't work is because um, this this file is too big. We could create a smaller file. And I'm actually beginning to think we should. But the, the problem here is this one here. Um, okay, wait. Oh, right, 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 because it, it requires a file name. And I'm beginning to think that might be a bad idea because we sort of know what the file is. Let's actually see if we can put that file into the, the git because it is important. Um, I say that and yet, let's see. See pop center two. Okay. Okay, and this looks like it's the population centers, uh, including the um, including the uh, dependent islands. But I think it doesn't yet include the um, the two-letter country code, which I want any regardless of, of anything else, uh, even if we don't separate out into separate. Uh, uh, into uh, w into ignoring islands and stuff like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead. We already have this saved. We already th I'm going to double check that we have this all BC gitted on the other machine. That is to say, we have it all pushed to Git. If we don't, I'm going to push it right now. And uh, this is uh, something you can't see that I'm doing. And oh, I don't have it all pushed. Oh, I don't have quite a bit of it pushed. So this is going to be a checkpoint save for me. Okay, now we're back here, and we are going to, um, let's see, command file was, yeah. See, I'm really, I'm really thinking, um, we will want this file there at some point, but I think we're going we're gonna to actually change it just a little bit. So let's, uh, let's see, what is, the, what is the file we're actually feeding to this thing? Uh, pop center one. Um, was it Pop Center one? I don't think so. It was something that had a JavaScript in it, so I think it was. And I think this is ac Pop Center data. So let's see. And I think this file is sort of important enough um, that we can actually keep it. We can put it in the Git, and I don't think it's even that long, really. So, so let's go ahead and do this. Copy Pop Center dit data. BC. Now, I'm going to call it BC Pop Center Output, because that's literally what it is. 
And I'm going to call it text, even though it looks sort of like a JSON, a JSON script. OK, fantastic. So now, let's see. Instead of doing all this sort of uh, garbage with uh, these long path names, why don't we just say get home slash cal is, is going to be our dir. So here we just need to download from dir. Do, sorry, that's pretty juvenile of me. Um, I, uh, this is going to be a pretty big file, and I don't want to copy it over, so we will go ahead and, and keep it from where it is here. Again, not really crazy about using this, um, this sort of per date directory scheme, but um, Um, yeah, can I do something better than that? Um, let's see. I mean, really it should be in something called like, you know, no backup, um, earth data, population, this thing. So... But then again, if other people are going to run it, I don't know if they want to put it there. So I'm going to leave it like this. Not super happy about it, that's all I'm saying. And let's see, instead of saying my data file equals command file, we're just going to say my data equals read file. And then the thing we just created, which was uh, BC, oh, BC, BC. No, 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 no. Hang on. What do I get for being a moron? And so we'll just call it this. I don't think I've githubbed anything, so I think we're actually going to be okay without having to fix this in git, because renaming the file in git is supposed to be easy, but it's not. So I'll say. And why do I... Oh, my, is my read file actually like that? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So this is just going to be my data. Here's going to be the read file. We don't care about the file name. Um, all right. Let's go ahead and make sure that I haven't broken anything by doing this. And in fact, that I can run it anywhere I want. So in fact, let's run it from the home directory, just to show you how smart we are. BC pop center output. Yeah. Um, so I went all the way to create dir, and then I didn't bother to use it. So let's do that. Oh yeah, that only took long because of the OGR info minus AL, and I think I actually want this file local as well. So, um, let's see. Yeah, because this, this is actually, um, this is actually taking too long to, um, to read. So let's see. Um, the file BC GPDW national grid text is the output of. Then I should probably explain why why I'm doing this. Which gives meta information about countries. I forgot to spell countries. No, there it is. Um, without polygon information. So let's go ahead and now make this true. BC GPW NAT grid. Uh, na, 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 na. Batman. Okay. This will probably not work, except that it does. And let me see if I'm going to be unhappy because it's going to be too big. That's taking a little bit of time there. It's not too big. It just took a while to get that data. So that's what we're going to do this. Uh, we're going to call it this as we agreed. Okay. Oh. That's not nice. 
This is because I'm I'm SSH S S H F S Sing. So even though it didn't preserve the oh what it does become here. Huh. Okay. I think on my other machine my ID is something different. No, it's the same. I don't know why I didn't want to do that. But anyway. I don't really care. It's it should work fine, and if it does, I don't care. Okay, so over here, back in Emacs. So now we're just going to use this file directly. Um, and I am tempted to say, yeah, let's let's go even a little bit crazier here. For dollar sign I split on the new line. Read file. Dir slash thing we decided to call it. So now we have everything sort of the nice one directory thing here. Um, now remember I'm calling it dollar sign i so I do need to fix this. Equal tilde. Uh, dollar sign i equals s. Now I like this a little bit better. I don't like really relying on Perl's default dollar sign underscore. Dollar sign i equals um, C hash, that's fine. And then for I split data, um, all right, let's see if this gives us the information that we got last time out of it. And if it does, this should be very quick actually, or it should break. That was one of those two things. Let's see where I probably a very minor error I made while editing something. For dollar sign I equals, let's see, split. National grid. There. That's read file split and the Ferrari. Ferrari. It's a Ferrari. Okay, beautiful. And that took just like a fraction of a second. All right, so now let's go back over here. Um, and uh, there's a temptation here to um, to break this into subroutines, and I'm I'm resisting the temptation uh, right now. Uh, Wow, we're just going to do this like the whole thing. And um, what did I call it? CC2 something? That sucker. Okay, I think I'm going to minimize Firefox for a little bit here. And at some point I'm going to bring up an X clock just because I can see what time it is because I, I have this is only partial screen for me. Uh, but you can't. It's 5.32 p.m. and 35 seconds in the mountain standard time zone, uh, but you probably don't care. Uh, it would be nice maybe to have an X clock just so we could have a time reference for this. Uh, you know, <sighs> some days. It's not bad actually. Uh, let's see if we can move it into the right position. We. There, now we know. Okay, I'm unhappy. Why does this think it is 13? Um, well, 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 well. You know, I think I, I, think I know what's wrong. Uh, what's wrong is that this machine Apparently, when it is frozen, it does not update the clock. So we can fix that with something called R date. Um, and I'm pretty sure this is about. Val val oh, it's not. Okay, hang on. Let me. There's. I know there's a time server called UTC NIST that we can fix this from. Let's see if I can find out where it is. Oh, UTC NIST Colorado.edu. It's the, it's the University of Colorado. So this is just going to check the time. Um, and that looks more realistic. This might not work because operation not permitted. And there we go. Now we're on correct time. But I'm going to make a note to myself outside of here that the virtual machine doesn't keep time. And there's, there are ways to fix that. Um, and you can't see me doing this. But it is important that we... So, so we're fine for now, but... We will um, we will go ahead and uh, you know we can actually go to time.gov if we have to, 
but this is uh, this is one easy way to reset the time correctly. So it is Sunday in Greenwich Mean Time. Okay, um, and we now have the X clock going. Okay, so I think uh, we have said we are happy with what it's outputting, uh, and now we just need to uh, do this conversion here. And once again, you will never be like Barry. Boy, and this time I think I missed out two parentheses. Yeah. So let's make sure, first of all, we're getting our lines uh, correct. And then this time we will need to force a minus debug because we are only printing out debugging output. Okay, fantastic. And it looks like... Um, so it's going to be name, which we're probably not going to use because we already have it from the other file. CC2, CC2, CC3. And CC and down, which we're also probably not going to use. And I'm going to be a little bit dor dorky and use a CSV uh, subroutine I created earlier. And that's slightly better than just separating on commas because it does take care of quotes. There are no quotes in this one, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and the and we're going to need it both ways because we're going to have to convert back and forth. So we're going to declare two array, uh, two hashes rather, CC2 to 3 and CC3 to 2. But because putting an extra 2 in there would really screw things up, Let's go ahead and do that. Three, two, two. Okay. Um, so CC two two three, and this is going to convert two to three, and we will need it backwards. So this is a mathematical relation, by the way. Three to two of three is two, and I really think that's the only thing we need from this. To be honest, I don't think we need. Um, there it gives us more information, like the country name, which we're going to ignore. We don't use it. We, we have it some, somewhere else. And then uh, the number. And so this is uh, this gives us that. Conversions. This is the conversion from uh, territory. These are the CC2 codes, by the way, that are being converted here, because that was the whole problem, is that independent territories and, uh, you know, which, which we can probably find. Uh, we the problem is we have two digit uh, two two letter country codes not three letter country codes as you can see it's not really a binary file but it plays one on TV um, and then for this all we care about I think is um, right we're no we we're actually for this all we care about is parent child parent isn't it I don't think we even care about names and stuff. Um, Right, conversions of ISO equal admin zero. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, good deal. Um, so that this again gives us more information about the country. And um, so here's where we actually start looking at the data. And the, uh, the issue here is um, average X... And here's where we actually go in and put all the CC info stuff in there. Um, and now the, the issue here is when we look at hash CC, we want let's see. Oh, you know, this could be uglier than I thought because we're actually printing as we go along instead of storing stuff up for printing. So this this might be really bad. Um, so in fact, this might. I mean, we could in theory run the other program again this time, keeping track of uh, which uh, which dependencies belong to which countries. But I think we can clean it up from where we are now. Uh, the only problem here is going to be. Um, yeah, let's even go back over here. Um, yeah, and I think what we're going to have to do over here is we're going to have to just pick up the data without actually um, without actually recording it because we, we have to combine nations. Okay. So this is going to be ugly. Um, and here the countries are based on that country name. Here I think we're okay because we actually say... Um, 
hash cc. Right. So we do we do go three here, and we 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 have that map like that. Okay. So let's do this here. This is getting really ugly. To the point I'm beginning to worry about its accuracy, but not that. Oh, right. I'm sorry. What I was going to say is. Um, uh, it's actually useful to have the, um, the it broken out by, with the dependency still in there. And for that, we're going to have, uh, this is the ISO code, and um, we have, we want the, um, so this is going to be the 3 to 2. See, it, I don't even know if this is going to work, actually. It's kind of fast. It should, actually, but it's weird, because it's sort of a triple nested thing going on. All right, let's see if this does what we want. Before I lose my freaking mind. Uh, it does not appear to work. So CC3 to 2, and that's probably because I misspelled ISO code. Let's try that again. Okay, beautiful. So this gives us CC2, CC3, country name, longitude, latitude, um, R value, uh, and uh, mean unit KM. And I think we can even be nice enough to print this uh, as a header. Uh, name, longitude, sorry, CLNG, because I'm trying to be consistent. Central latitude. I think R value, we're just going to call R value, because we, we all need to explain it separately anyway. I don't think that's going to be... Um, that's going to be something we're going to get, be able to get. Um, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why does Kosovo not have a, uh, a top left? Because does it actually not have one? Okay, hang on. Does Kosovo still exist as a nation? I don't know. Um, we'll, we'll get to that in a sec. Okay, and then we have the, uh, what are we calling it, the, um, I think it's just something weird, it's, it's just the, like, the max mean unit KM. I'm just going to leave that as is, because I don't really know what it is. I'm going to make a note here to maybe install numeric here, because this, this is getting ugly enough that you kind of want to see it in numeric. And give me one second here, I'm going to see how, how I ended up building numeric on my other machine. Okay. I guess there was a bit of a struggle there, which is why I, I'm hesitant to uh, to install it here. Um, but I might do it anyway. Okay. So now uh, we have a nice little header. We have this thing going, and now um, let's go ahead and do an error check. I think. If Kosovo is the only one I can deal with it, but if there's more than one, I want to sort of give a, an NA value or something, or not applicable so we know, because NA might actually be like the code for something. I don't think it is, but um, so let's do this real quick so we can find out which countries don't apparently have a uh, three of them CHN, St. Helena. Um, okay, so for those, this is so evil, we're just going to assign it a value, but we're not going to be too clever because I don't want to say uh, NA because that could actually mean something, I think we'll just do that, and that is sort of the universal symbol for I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Okay. So this is looking pretty good, and I think we can even put this in order. Um, let's see. I wonder if Emacs has a spreadsheet mode. I mean, it's sort of hard to believe that it wouldn't have a, uh, a spreadsheet mode, but let's see. Okay, I think we can end dependent scenes, by the way, once again. And let us... No. Yeah, I'm sure that it does have a spreadsheet mode, and I think they're even. Um, I might even have LibreOffice installed here, and I think that has a spreadsheet mode. 
I don't know if I want to bring it up though. And of course, we can go to Google Spreadsheets and all that good stuff. All right, so installing numeric might be uh, might be something we do later. Um, anyway, getting back to this. Right, so this is actually a printout. I'm going to look at it a little bit more carefully um, of the nations with the uh, mean, you know, blah 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 blah. And the only problem is that um, if I'm going to sort this by north to south, the uh, header line is going to get messed up. Maybe, although maybe not necessarily, because it's R value, which is, um, you know, it's sorry, not R value. It's uh, C lat, which is a numeric, which is uh, which is a letter. So let's see if we can do this. The hell did I just call it though? Oh, <laughs> don't have a name for it yet. Okay. Um, I think I already have a test one, but we can rename that. Sort minus T comma minus K four R and R. And let's see if this looks good here. Yeah, and I think the problem is going one, two. Oh, it's actually now the fifth one, isn't it? Because I added a field. Yep, there we go. And I, I'm guessing that the um, I'm guessing that the R value line went right in the middle. I don't know why it does that. I don't see why R value or so C that would come between. Oh, it's be between the positive and negative numbers. So we're going to do a little bit of a hack here. Um, let's go ahead and do. Um, this, then we're going to bring up test 2 real quick in the, I think it's in the uh, main directory, and we're going to just, this is not something we do not really like to edit text files like this, uh, even CSV files like this, but in this case um, the Falkland Islands are at negative 51 degrees south latitude? Really? I could have sworn they were further north than that. Uh, New Zealand seems correct. The Falkland Islands I'm a little bit confused about. Um, that seems really, really far to the south for the Falklands. Uh, let's find out. And looking at extreme values can actually be useful sometimes because they sort of tell you where um, things have gone right or wrong. And let's see where this is. It's off the coast of Abradil. Oh, no, actually, they are pretty far south, aren't they? Yeah, they're off the coast of Argentina, not Brazil. So there we go. I don't know if this value is correct, but it, it's acceptable. Um, and I'm almost wondering if we can create a... Let me... Okay, fantastic. I actually have a little thing on my main machine called doing, which lets me make really quick notes without having to st stop my flow of con con of concentration. Uh, also, I have a program that helps me to speak English that apparently I did not install today. And I mean a program that runs on my actual physical operating system. Um, okay, so I might be able to use that to help out here. And so now test two, I think, is exactly the way we need it. So we're going to copy test two to BC get cow. Okay, now I'm beginning to think that maybe putting it in north to south order was a bad idea. So, and the reason for that is because um, this is a very general file. You can do a lot of things with this. For example, you can, uh, you know, you can sort of by any key you want. Uh, right now it's in sort of the uh, you know, I think we make one slight improvement to this, and that is um, assuming this is actually coming from a ha hash. It is not coming from a hash. Okay, nice. Um, uh, let's see. So BC pop center output. Let's see what this, I think, okay, I see what's going on here. This is, um, this is ordered by country code, but because it's a, uh, it's, it's, it's not even a numerical sort. This is just a hideous order to have things in. Um, 
but I don't care. I think having it unordered is fine because this allows people to order it however they want. So let's go ahead and do this. BC pop centers with depths.csv. And we will need to document that file, so uh, now I can just sort of make some doing comments. That installing numeric something I do like on my own time. Um, so, okay, so this is good. We have this now. Uh, I think we can actually push this. Uh, and now we're gonna try to fix the dependencies to be to be. I'm gonna go ahead and BC. I'm gonna go ahead and push this to Git and call it checkpoint just to make things really confusing. It has a timestamp, of course. But in theory, you could even uh, because now we have the little time thing going. You could even uh, sync it to this uh, timestamp down there. Uh, not that anyone would. Okay. So um, now we're going to try to fix this by fixing the dependent countries. So here, instead of just printing stuff as we go along, um, we are going to actually build up a hash and I think if we have C hash country um, uh, ID equals by hash one equals hash two um, right and this gets everything so we're fine so now what we're going to do here is um, Oh boy. Uh, C hash country hash CC. Oh, so this is still technically correct because we are still going. C hash is where we're storing the country information. So we're restoring the, um, you know, the uh, the information that comes from the shape file. So this is actually reasonable to put the information from this file in here as well. So let's just um, let's be a little bit nicer and call this hash cc, which we know it is. So c hash hash country, and then we'll say average x. Uh, actually, total x x total, because we're going to add it. Uh, so actually, over here when we have this. So if we have this as our country, if conversions country, and is that correct? Yeah, uh, wait a minute. Mm, yeah. Nope, we need to go one step further. Okay, so here we have my country equals hash CC. Um, if CC three to two of country. In other words, if there's a this is the three letter code that we get out of the um, the file that uh, that I created because that's what's inside of the pop grid stuff. That's what's inside of the uh, population uh, data. Um, let's take a look here. I need to need to do that too. Really love that alias. Okay, right. So this is going to be. Um, oh crap! No, it's not. Okay, so the CC is the number. Um, uh, so from the number, we need to convert to the country code. Which that that I think we do have actually. This is we we do that over here. So C hash split data hash CC. This is gonna be a number like a hundred or whatever. And I think we can go one step further and go to um, the ISO code here. So this is um, this is hash CC. This is the number. 
Um, C info ISO code. Okay, so this is the number. This is right. So this is the C hash of the number that gives you C hash country. And when we do this, and I, I'm going to definitely test this. And then what we want from there is the ISO code. And I am definitely going to test that. Yeah, that's not very useful, is it? Um, so that's, I think that's what we're doing there. Let's run the code. Ten to one says I made an error in syntax somewhere. Yep. Your dollar sign C hash. Okay. Line seventy two. Oh. That's actually okay. Um, line seventy five, runaway line. Yeah, this this would be good if I didn't have like partial sentences floating around. Okay, hundred to be this looks correct. This actually does look correct. Um and so, so we've got to be careful here. We're doing a whole bunch of conversions. We could do these even. Um, actually, I think beyond this, we can't. So now we have the three-letter code. If CC three to two of country exists, then country becomes that. So this will convert from three to two if it's possible. If there actually is a two uh, two-letter code for this country. Okay. One more time now. We should now have mostly two-letter codes for countries. Yeah, some will not will not have that because like uh, I think we found that so so something Kos Kosovo. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's interesting. And maybe some other ones don't have that either. Um, TZA Tanzania I think is doesn't have one either. It's fine. But now here comes the the, the important part. We're going to be very careful with this because um, uh, we don't want to screw up. We want to make sure that the main countries don't get screwed up here, but okay. So if conversions country, in other words, if there is a thing that converts this two-letter code, if it exists, um, then country becomes conversions country. So that's not confusing at all. So let's look at this. This will be very similar to what we had before with one minor difference. And the minor difference will be, um, for example, the US is going to show up more than once. 16. I'm lying, of course. Let's see if Denmark shows up more than once. 208, 234, 304. All dependencies of Denmark are showing up as Denmark. I could have sworn America had some dependencies, uh, like the American Samoa. So now I've got to figure out what the hell happened there. AS. So let's do this. And it's also possible that um, that should have worked. AS, American Samoa, is part of the US. And so American Samoa. Um, Oh, yeah, here we are. Plenty of things belong to the United States. We're bad, we're bad. Okay. So now we, we're not going to we're not going to print out the data yet because we've got to sort of go. Uh, we still have we need to combine some of these values to get the final value. So the x total is going to be the hash of x. Whoa, one more line. Y total is going to be the hash of y going to add to the uh, add to that. So this will be the sum of all the, the country and all its dependencies, and we don't need that anymore. Um, we're not ready to compute longitude, latitude, and radius because we don't have all the data yet. So this doesn't apply. None of this applies. So you see that, that whatever the hell that is, it doesn't apply. Um, And this is, the, by the way, the uh, wrong way to create a Perl comment, but I'm going to use it. I'm going to hack it. Okay. So now let me make sure there's nothing else I need to um, 
information I need to keep about the territories. Uh, you know, the... Uh, output, output, I want output. Okay, uh, the P area, number of points, and population are also going to all be important. So let's go ahead and, and get those in there. Did I actually have population in here? I think I did. I think I did a divide by or something. Okay. So we want the um, pop total. By the way, for many countries, of course, this will just be the pop. There will only be one entry. So it's a somewhat uh, redundant. Um, CCY, P area we want, and points. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm going to be ugly. Um, okay, here we go. Pop points. What else do we want? P area. I think that's literally everything except CC, which of course we don't want to add. Um, add values for a country and all depths, which are force dependence. The bad thing, by the way, is now this program can no longer produce the file that we've just created because we sort of uh, we sort of gotten rid of that now. All right, super. Now we're going to put this in one. Oh, we can't could, but it's not going to do anything. Okay, so now, um, if everything goes well, we actually should have the data for the country plus its dependencies. Um, not sure how useful that is, but let's find out. And now we can even do something like, by the way, we can reuse the variable i, of course, because um, because e e each loop is separate. Let's see what this gives us. This should give us just the non-dependent countries. And do I still want to print this out? I still want to print that out. Um, I do I want to debug it? I do not want to debug this anymore. So let's do this. Let's do this. Um, not exactly what I expected, but I think that is... Uh, let's see, hash country... Um, okay. Interesting. Interesting. So actually, I think what we've done here is we've actually created C hashes for the country's two or three digit code instead of for its uh, numerical CC. So if I went further on this, it would be it should go to the numerical ones, and there they are. Um, it should go to the alphabetic ones. So this is kind of really ugly, and I probably should have. Uh, I'm going to create another. Uh, I'm going to create another hash for this because this is we're not what we're doing here is no longer the same thing. So hash country, and we're going to say see info of country. So we're not going we're not going to use the same hash cuz it's sort of for a different. We do need the C hash here because this is how we convert the uh, ISO code to a CC code. And but I don't think we need it anywhere else. So if this is correct, we should just see some alphabetical names. There they are. They're beautiful. Some have three letters, some have two letters. The ones with three letters are problematic. Actually, they're really problematic because That's actually really bad, I, because I don't know what Tanzania is actually a part of. Hmm. Oh, we might have... Oh. Oh, I guess that is natural three-digit country code. So why didn't this catch... Because there's a comma inside of the country name. Beautiful. 
Just freaking beautiful. Um, let's see. Do any other countries could have a freaking comma in their names? Is that really the only one that has a comma in its name? Tanzania, United Republic of. So this is really, really, um, well, I, I made it, so I can't really complain too much. Um, this is really, really bad, because we have a comma-separated file with uh, comma-separated, uh, with commas in some of the values. Not cool. So anyway, let's see here. We can do better than this. So what we're going to have here is anything that's not a, ooh, no, it can be a comma if it wants to be. Um, comma followed by A to Z plus, and that's actually going to be part of the capture, comma, A to Z plus, comma, bunch of numbers, um, and since we're testing, I'm going to kill it over here. And we're avoiding commas in this debug statement because that's what we're testing. So let's see what this does. Let's see what this does. Okay, Afghanistan, too good, 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 good. Ah, uh, yes, Bolivia, the plurinational state of Bolivia. If you've ever been there, it's lovely. I suggest you visit British Columbian Islands. And now I think I'm happy with this. Almost. Caraco and um, and Coach de Avri have stupid na have stupid uh, country names because they have funny symbols in them. Whoa! And so do Reunion Island and Saint Bartholomew. <laughs> um, and those are the Alband Islands because of, you know freaky Greek people can't. Uh, um, all right. So let's see. Uh, <laughs> so this is actually now just going to become one, two, three, four. But now there's another thing we need to do. And I, I swear to God, this these, this is the fault of the Europeans. So if you ever see any Europeans, just smack them around and tell them they screwed up their country names. Um, actually, I do have another function here. I think that fixes Unicode by removing. Oh, do I not have it? Okay. Hi, Gavalta. Let's see. There's a way to fix Unicode, actually. Um, let me see if I, I think I have it. Uh, I might have it in maps because that's sort of where you would. Or may, is it in GeoNames? It might be in GeoNames. Uh, and I hate Emacs droppings. There's supposed to be a way to move them somewhere. But there really isn't. Okay, and so UTF, 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 and there's a way to d uh, the conversion here is um, clean up, and that is this function uh, unit decode, and I think that should actually suffice. I think that's all we really need to do. So, unfortunately, the country codes do not have any uh, stupid characters in them. All right, let's see if we fixed one of Europe's major problems. Yeah, I'm not crazy about that, but cat de avre, but it does. It has done something, obviously. And a uh, 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 copyright union. Okay, I might not like I might like this unlike this enough that I don't want to do it this way. All right, screw it. We're gonna do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna fix it some other way. All right, so let's see what we need to fix. We need to fix Kurakao. So this is gonna become a C.
And if I remember correctly... This is the pearl magic to do that. But we can easily test by seeing if Karako has now been... I've now fixed Karako. By the way, if you're one of the whining people from Karako, I don't even know where your stupid country is. No, that didn't work. C3, A7. Oh, A7, not C7. And I could be wrong about this whole notation here, too, so that's uh, some other thing. There it is, I fixed Karako, and I want to fix Kurt the Avery, which is, by the way, the Avery Cursed. <laughs> C3, B4. And that's going to be Cote de Ivory. And while we're at it, we might as well fix Bartholomew. And C3A9, I think we already... Oh, we don't have. C3A9 is going to be E. And C3A9... Well, if we want to be consistent, I guess it has to be E as well. And I'm not quite crazy enough to go beyond that. So I guess it's St. Bartholemy. I wonder what it actually is. And then, of course, C385. Looks like all these begin with uh, C3, which is kind of interesting. Is uh, the Aland Islands. And if I've done... Believe it or not, Emacs should be able to figure out casing on this. It won't, but I mean, it should be able to. Bahamas, the. Bon Vier, Santa Rosa, and Sobia. <laughs> God, people have stupid country names. And, and damn it, so this is a hack. Double hack. Need a capital. You know what else I do it this way. And then, when all said and done, we're going to just, you know, capitalize the name. There's only one case this is going to actually help, but it's a generically a good thing because it means that, uh, yeah, there are the Aland Islands. Yeah, whoopee. Okay. So we fix this. I'm going to push this now because I think this is uh, enough of a fix. Uh, although I'm not going to mention anything about what it actually does. I'm just going to say checkpoint. I know you can't see what I'm doing. Uh, but I am just pushing this to git. Okay. So we've done this, we've done this, we've done this. Um, right. So now we should be able to see the countries in alphabetical order of, um, I think this is going to be in alphabetical order of uh, their country codes. That's probably, I should probably should go run the die testing, huh? Or I should have saved the file. That's brilliant. It doesn't really work without that. Um, and this is by the three-letter country codes, which is okay, because this is how we, uh, this is how we uh, got their info in here. Or is it? Let's see. Wait a minute. CC3T2. Oh. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, okay. Um, so what have I done wrong now? Yes, I have actually gotten rid of the portion of this that, um, wow, was that just totally useless there because, um, I never use the name from this file. Yep, it is. So really, I really, really did absolutely nothing useful here. Um, because I, it turns out I don't use the name from this file. But I did delete the two lines that actually do something, which I'm trying to find using control Y, these lines. The lines that actually c do the conversion themselves. <sighs> Hit the wrong key on Emacs and you could blow up the world. Okay. Alright. See if this helps. There we go. Now one or two of them will... FRNL, I think I know what... There, there's a weirdness there, th which I can handle. Okay, fantastic. Now we have... The, um... Now we can put in this code here. Okay. Uh, and now we can compute... 
average x, average y, average z based on population and x total. So equals c info i um, Did I call it x total? No, I just called it x, didn't I? C info i pop. And then for y and z, we just do this. Okay. And let's see, then we need to convert this all to, um, to spherical coordinates. deal and then we need to okay so we're gonna go ahead and do this all yeah I don't know what the hell this does anymore but I don't really care okay um, okay so we're we gonna have the issue that some of these are not going to have I think that's okay actually um, are we actually preserving the CC3? Well we could we could always go CC2 to CC3 so I think we're okay there if we want that um, and then we want to print this stuff Something tells me I've done something wrong here, but anyway. So this won't work. I just want to make sure I don't have any tech. I don't have any syntactical errors. I do not. Okay. So. So I is going to be like so three. T so this is going to be I. That's the two-letter abbreviation. Then the uh, three-letter, which is going to be CC two to three of this, if it has one. Um. Now there should be no oh you know what this actually um, let's be a little bit more clever here let's go ahead and put in a not n a value partly so we have it and partly so it'll stick out when we're doing our testing uh, c info name zero which I think is now c info. Where am I? It's, 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 um, we don't have the name in C info. We do have it in, let's see, th that's, okay. So, yeah, here it is. So, C hash country name zero. And that's the three. Yeah, I'm a little concerned here. We're creating C info hash. We are country one equals two. So this is information about country in its CC3 hash. And then we convert it from there, from the data. Um, okay, so this is the original. Um, Let's go ahead and record um, CC3 before we convert it. So, so this we're going to keep track of the CC3. Then we'll convert it to the CC2 if we can, and then we'll convert it to the main country. And I just realized that it's going to be really, really ugly because um, well, hello 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 we have a good evening hello how, how are you doing sir we have a user in chat very excited here um, uh, and we had a apparently how can I help you sir xric ardo 2x uh, xric ardo ardo I guess it would be um, how may I be of assistance sir Hope you're enjoying the stream. Well, just, there we go. 
some help in my code in C. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, uh, tell me a little bit about it. I kind of want to finish this up for tonight, uh, but I have some time after this. We might be able to look at it. Uh, tell me a little bit about what you're doing in C. Um, I might be able to help. I do a very little C, but um, but if it's about astronomy or sea spice, I actually know a little bit about that. So give me a quick rundown of what you're doing here in C. And uh, for those of you who are watching for something else, the problem is not big. Okay, well, good. Just tell me what it is. I am all a Twitter or a Facebook or a Instagram, whatever your favorite social media platform is. MySpace. Okay. So give me a quick description of the problem and um, let me see if we can, I have to program a checkers game for the university, not, not that super difficult. Checkers easier than chess. Uh, how far I'll, uh, I can't get to the logic. Okay. So let me ask you a couple of questions here. Um, first of all, so we can all enjoy are you willing to do this on Replit? Replit is a shared coding platform that I've used previously. And on uh, Replit, we can both code at the same time. I'll probably just watch you and, and tell you how to do it. And second of all, are you willing, uh, if possible, to join me on Discord and see if I can get you on onto the stream directly? Um, to Replit, it is, yes, I will actually do that. And it's very, very simple, actually. It's just that. And very easy to use, totally free, um, works 99% of the time. And, um, okay, so if you're willing to do that, so uh, tell me, um, um, oh, the des Discord link, okay. Uh, the way I've got this set up right now, oh boy, I've never actually done this before. Let's see what happens. Um, I don't know if you'll be heard on the stream or not. Give me a sec, though, and I will... Um, See if I can find where in Discord I want to be. Uh, oh, that would work too. Then we could just call each other. Uh, and on Discord, I am very Carter 2019. Alright, hang on. Wait, 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 wait. Um, let me give you my little... You have to do the little thingy for Discord, which is... Uh, you have to give that special fancy uh, username. Um, wow, did I get disconnected from Discord? Maybe. All right, give me a second while I get back into Discord apps. It was down earlier today, so um, hopefully it's back up by now. And I'm going to open it up. Yeah, I know. Unfortunately, that it's not very hard for 2019. It's I, I just the moment I said it, I knew it was wrong. Let's see. And I added a copy, and if this works, I can do a paste. That's what it is. And if you tell me if you tell me yours, I'll add you. Uh, we can do a phone call, and by the way, if you're watching the stream for other purposes, well, screw you, I've got a live one on the line. Um, and uh, we do have an, uh, someone here with a sort of a, a, an adult name, and we are, um, we are waiting. Okay, here we go, we have a friend request coming in, we will check that friend request, and we will attempt a call. Oh, this is not going to work. Hello, can you hear me? Okay, give me one second. I'm going to put my headphones in um, because right now you're on speaker, which isn't going to work. Okay, say something, please. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. I don't know if my stream can hear you. Um, well, they can hear my headphones, which means they might be able to hear you through my headphones. Tell you what, I'm going to actually uh, check my stream uh, on uh, Twitch directly and see what's going on. Okay. This will only take a second, and well, it'll take what it takes, I guess. All right, let's see, uh, going over here now. All right, let's see, uh, going over here now. Okay, uh, when I'm going to ask you to say something, and when, and when you do, I'm going to unmute the stream. Go ahead and say something, please. I'm ask you to say something, and when, and when you do, I'm going to unmute the stream. Go ahead and say something, please. To say something and when you don't no. unmute the stream. Go ahead and say something, please. Okay, I think they heard you. It's repeating itself. It's, okay. it's horrible. Unf unfortunately, there's no way to do that. Okay, um, do you have anything coded up yet? Uh, I started with a small logic. Okay. Uh, involving a 
matrix. Good, good plan. Can you copy your code to uh, to Replit so we can see it? I don't have no, I don't have anything started on code. I have it on paper. Oh. My logic was creating a matrix four by four for the play for the playable spots. I think. Oh, that's interesting. Um, in checkers, you can't use the other squares. Is that correct? Yes. You just you can only use the, the black one. You know, I didn't remember that, but I think you were correct. I didn't think about that. Yeah, okay. I would have created an 8x8 eight eight matrix. I would have created an 8x8 eight eight matrix just because I think 4x4 four four is going to be really hard to deal with, but but okay. I mean, I mean it's more... I was go trying ahead. to print it um, using the matrix because with the matrix I can control the... I mean... At the end of the day, this is console, so I have to print line by line. Right. So it makes it a little bit harder. I was thinking print blocks of two squares, like printing at the same time a white and a black. So oh. You have to do four prints. I see. Line. I see. Um. The only problem I, I see with... Demo, I have a demo that uh, the, the teacher gave us, but uh, I, can, I can take a screenshot so you can see. Okay, um, let's see. Okay, now I can see it in Discord, but I don't have Discord up and running on my, um, up and running on my, okay. Oh, interesting. I can. I can, yes. Um, unfortunately, no one... No. <laughs> uh, you know, I wonder if I can... I don't think I can see this on the other machine. Uh, I'm looking at... An, oh, you're, you're watching my stream, so you know that I'm not seeing this on stream. I'm seeing this somewhere else. I could, in theory, download it to my stream. Uh, that's going to be a pain in the ass. Okay, so I see what you're trying to do here. Um, let me suggest, if so I can help you, let's get under REPL, um, yeah, and can you, you oh, thank you, you're brilliant, and, and I just screwed that up because I keep forgetting my, my, <laughs> my code for, um, my VM doesn't, doesn't take this link correctly, but that's okay, I can definitely do this, um, give me one second, I'm gonna go to, I'm going to be lazy. I'm going to put this into tiny URL real quick. Although I don't really know <laughs> why. I know. It takes more time to do this than it will to uh, actually... Um, than it would to actually just go there. Uh, YX4H. I need to fix cut and paste. I'll make a note to myself to do that in just a sec. KUJR. Let's go over here. Um... Let me just pick a quick note here. Okay. Um, and there we are. Beautiful. Okay. Now, if you want to just put in any code that you already have, you said you don't have any code. Um, you want to put in some code here. That's cool. You want to put in demo code. That's cool. Cool. Now, the, the little problem is that the small code I have is starting of the functions, and it's all in Portuguese. Uh, oh. So I don't mind doing it in English. Okay. I understand. Which is nice. which is good because I don't I know a little Spanish but not any Portuguese. Okay. Um. So I guess at some point I'm going to tell people. Uh, I'll make a note to myself. Let's see. I want to. I just sorry. I just want to make sure that the people who are watching the stream, not that anyone ever does, uh, that they have. Um, that I make it clear that this the stream the stream breaks into a different topic um, at a given point in time, which is fine, but you know, so and okay. Okay. Yeah. So I was thinking this. I have the spots four by four. Okay. And are you sure you want to stick with four by four and okay, I see what you're saying. The the problem okay. here is it's easier four by four because when I print I can do like an array print. Sure. And I do the Y for the or the Y or the X. Okay. It's easier to print. It's just a. Uh, I mean, I can use the 16. I can just not use it at all. 
Okay. Um. Um. Yeah. Or you can do um, int arg c, char star star arg v or something, or char star arg v array, but that's fine. Okay. I was calling it on problems. Same shit, I guess. All right. It should be rep. Rep. It's pretty good. It should. It should handle most decent C stuff. Okay. So, um, create a function. It doesn't like the void for some reason. It doesn't? I'm not seeing the same errors you are necessarily. So. And you should be able to keep going. It just doesn't like it because it's incomplete right now, I think. Okay. Okay. And what are you going to take as arguments? Void? Or are you going to take spots as, as the, as the um, argument? Or are you just going to have spots be global? Spots should be global for... Uh, okay, so then you want... Mm -hmm. I think I will need it on various functions. Okay, so then you want... Oh, you are going to pass it then as, a, as, an, as an array? Um, I no, I think that's fine, yeah. I that can pass it as, uh, I can call it something like this, right? You don't, yeah, that's fine. That, you don't need the star, though. I think you can do that, yes. I, I'm not sure, so what I would do at this point is just print, do a printf of spots 1, 1 or something, just to see if it works. This is how I code is very, very slowly, one step at a time. So now just to make sure that we've actually done the pass correctly. I guess it's going to be percent %d, right? Yeah, because it's, it's going to be, uh, yeah. it's going to be... Okay. Great. And remember to actually call the function from main. With sp yeah, okay, sorry. Okay, let's run this and see if it works. If it does, we at least have done a pass correctly. Array has incomplete type int pla. Um, okay, yeah, let's try that. It worked. I'm surprised. I was going to pass it as uh, address of spots, but that's fine. Okay, go ahead and run this and see if this works. It's not doing anything right now, right? Yeah. It's still printing zero, so... Yeah. I need something. Yeah, I see. I don't... Let's see. For sure, I need something. No, no, spots is fine. Spots is a perfectly valid variable name. Otherwise, the compiler would complain spots is not defined. I think the problem is over here. Uh, you want... Um, int let's see oh actually hang on okay oh I see what you've done you've actually done something a little bit clever which is this is spot and this is spot -sa, so they are different um I think what you want to do is this let's see if that works no And I think over here you want to do, I think over here what you want to do is, is this. Yeah, yeah, that was the, the objective. But on this I need to return. Hmm. Well, it's a void, so it doesn't have to return anything. Let's see. Is not an array, pointer, or vector. Let's see. Um... I mean, technically, this is a st int star star because it's a pointer to a pointer, but I don't think that's going to help. Um, the pointer type of int star star cannot do that. Okay. 
Uh, let's see. And this didn't work, right? Array has incomplete type. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, well, you know, Google knows everything, so... Yeah. <laughs> there it is. It's one of the most... Okay. Um... Well, int array mn, when it has constant size, so it looks like you were correct. Um, right, I mean, they actually specify the size of n and n, but you tried that. Let's look at the error message real carefully. It might be that it's passing int. Oh, actually, now we actually want to pass spots. Okay, so that works, but it prints zero for some reason. Now, you are sure that this initializes the elements all to two? Let's, let's see what this does. Whoa. Wait. Um, I'm not redefining spots, I'm just, that should be, Let's not put this here because oh, sexy. you're right, you're right, you're right, right. Okay, so the problem I think is that the uh, brace to brace does not initialize it to, uh, yeah, I don't think you need to initialize it because it should, by default it will initialize to zero. Okay, okay. Um, I've heard that. So do you want to do maybe like that? And then let's see if this uh, fixes it. Yeah, a array initializer might, must be an initializer list. And the only thing I can think of is because you have a two-dimensional array, this doesn't work. That, that's the only thing I can think of. So because... I have enough time to do everything I want. Let's see if we can do this. Um, so let's see if we can do printf test 3. So if this works, we should see a 42 show up there. We do not. Wow. So you cannot apparently initialize arrays like this. I mean, obviously you could do this. I mean, yeah. But that's not... Yeah, that works, but that's not fun. I mean, that's not what you want. Well, you could always, um, in the main loop, just, you know, initialize it by going 4i equals 0 to 3, 4j equals 0 to 3, blah, blah, blah. Um, let's go to Google real quick. Now, are you using... See, there's a difference between C, C sharp, and C++. Do you know which one you're using? Yeah. I'm using just regular C. Okay. Um, let's see how we do that. Yeah, in the beginning, I think that the, the, the thing that you're doing, um, yeah, oh, or if we just specify zero, designated initializer, oh, this is how you do it. So it's not quite that simple. You have to say uh, zero <laughs> dot dot four. Okay, let me go back here. So in theory, see the problem is this is a two-dimensional race. I'm not sure this is going to actually work. Yeah. I mean, if it works, well, yes, but. 
loop. Yeah, well it's a use of missing equal in designator. Actually, let me, sorry, not print test because we're not defining it anymore. Um, okay, so I think we need to put another one of those in there. Uh, I'm very hesitant to think this will work. Um, what is this oh, equal. And we're trying to assign it to that value. So I think if this works, I'll be surprised, but not, yeah, let's see. Error designator, oh, array bounds four. Hang on, hang on, that's zero to three then, which is fine. Zero to three, which is fine. I'll be damned. Okay. okay. I've learned something, okay. Finally worked. Finally worked, <laughs> we, can, we can do it with this very bizarre looking two-dimensional syntax, and of course we want to initialize to zero, right? So I was thinking that zero would be if it was no character at all. One would be if there is a white character. One because there were uh, white and black pieces. I mean, I don't know if it's black and white or black and brown. No, I know what you're saying, so but um, using white and, wh and white and black. Right, or red and black red and red and like black doesn't different. matter. But yeah, but the problem is on every other line, zero is going to be printed. Uh, it's going to be printed differently, right? On the first line, it's going to be like black white, but on the second line, the first uh, column is going to be white black, right? Yeah. So I don't. I mean, that's that's, that's, that's the problem. Yeah, that's why I. If it were up to me. Solves the problems. Yeah. If it was no, up to me. I I, mm -hmm. I printed the board. Right. I, I I spent like two hours. Oh my god. The whole board. I oh my god. The board. And then I realized then that with my board, mm -hmm. I couldn't print anywhere the, the character, so I had to start over. I spent a lot of time. Wow. It's paired in functions and shit, and then and I ended up on um, zero code at 1.42 a.m. Oh, what time is it for you there? For us here in, it's wrong. One forty-two. Okay, so you're on Greenwich Mean Time. Yeah. yeah. London time. Yeah. It's 6.42 in the uh, evening here, so I'm, I'm fine, but... Okay, now let me show you, we could do this. I mean, we could... Um, so let's do a simple loop here. Now, what we can't do, I'll show you what we can't do first, because... So we cannot do... Um, Sorry, we're doing white and black, which is actually nice. Um, do I need a print F here? Can I do that? For sure. I can't do print, right? Yes. Yeah. You print. And then we're going to put a new line that's here. That's and now let's see what happens. We're going to get white, 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 white. But you can do this. Um, actually, do you mind if I just I'm gonna print W and B because we're, we're going to run out of space otherwise. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And now what you could do here is uh, if i mod 2 equal, if it's an even numbered row, you can print that. But if it's an odd numbered row, you can print. Yeah, yeah. That was actually what I used on my, my boards when I built it on the first time. And what have I done wrong here? Why am I. What's the logic I had? Wait. What? Uh, because you know, that the spaces. Say that again. You have, you have to, to space here. Oh, to oh, space oh. Here. Like this. Uh, that's not what I wanted. Give me a sec. Actually, you know what? We don't need a space between these. I mean, right now we're going to tight print the board. We can space it out a little bit in just a sec. Uh, there's something more wrong here, though. Yeah. There we go. Why wasn't that working earlier? And of course, um, but this still doesn't work though because, yeah, because you only have J going, okay, J going to four, I going to four. Yeah, but as you saw in the example, I need a board that for each square it's a five by three. So I have to add extra code on top of this. And 
understand. It's, mm. it's extra complicated because I have to do for each square. Uh huh. I can't print it on one line. Oh, that's right. That's right. Three lines height. Uh, and I have to the first line. It's like five, uh, five whites, five blades, five white, five blades. The second line is the middle line. Is where the character will be if he is like the, the white. Or the red, whatever. Right. I have to do like two character, two, five black, uh, five white. That's the not playable space. Then right. After on the yeah. black space again, two black. The yep. character, two black. I see your problem. So, um, so okay. I guess. Right. In other words, each one of these uh, i equals zero represents two rows, not one row. So each of these represents a two by two square, um, because you are treating this as a. I mean, are you willing to consider going to eight by eight? Or no, of course, I, I'm willing to consider anything that works. Okay, so I think we should just treat each square as separate and just ignore the ones that are unplayable. So let's go eight eight zero seven zero seven. And then over here, I think it's going to be a lot easier for us if we do J equals 8. And then I think here the test will be for I plus J. And I think I want to do it like this. And then we'll just say print B, else print W. And at the end of every line, let's see what this does. I mean, that looks a little bit better to me. Let's say Now, of course, you probably want to print something fancier here for blacks and whites, but this is the sort of uh, the base here. Yeah, that's the one square base, because I have to have the, each square is uh, 3 by 5. Right, and that's going to make your uh, board, um, let's see, that's going to make your board... Oh, I see, you're, you're still going to have the same problem as before, because... Um, because you are going to need to print BBB, then new line BBB, new line BBB, new line BBB, right? Uh, actually, it's I have to print five legs. On the second line, I have two legs, the character, two legs. And on the last line, I have five legs because it's not three by three or two by two, it's three by five. Three height, five long. This is for each. each line. Sorry, each, each cell is each three. Square. Right, each square, each square is square. three columns. Can you see the example on the Discord? Oh, sorry. Let me go back to the Discord here real quickly. Uh, let's go back to Discord here. People who are on the stream can't see it, but they can live without seeing it for a minute. Um, let's see. Oh yes, I do see that. Okay. Square is a three by five. You see. Yes, so yes, I do. I have to replicate. But I think. I'm telling you. I gotcha. The first line has to be. Gotcha. Five space. Okay. Five, 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 five. Okay. Um, so why don't we? Why don't we create something called a print array? It's going to be um, let's see. Forty long by twenty-four wide. Okay. And then instead of trying to print all this at once, we'll just store the stuff in the array. And then we will print the array line by line. So over here, uh, let's see. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. So over here, let's figure out. Um, so for i equals your date, so if i is equal to um, 1, what's your row number going to be? Actually, it's going to be three times i, I think. Yeah, I guess. No? I guess so. I mean, when you're on the first row of the checkerboard, the uh, the the printing starts at row zero, right?
No, let me I check. Actually, start at row one, position one, because the first row and the first column it's for the first numbers and letters. Right, but since we're using C, our, our rows are zero based, so it's C zero number zero. Okay. So I think we can so do. That's, that's so I think this is what we want to do. So we're going to fill in all these rows. Oh, hang on, let me, I hate when that does that. Okay. Um, and then columns, we're going, oh, I'm sorry, there's five rows, isn't there? Three columns. Okay, and the columns are going to be J. I don't think, I'm not sure this is going to work, but I think this is going to give us a good first approximation of what we want. And, and so we're going to say print array row call equal, I don't know how you feel about the ternary operator. Okay. So if I plus J uh, is even, um, it's three dots, right? Yes. Sorry, which means we fill it with a dot, and the other one is just blank? Yeah, it's one dot, or else it's blank. If it's, yeah, that's true. So we have a nice, beautiful, and I say that in a very sarcastic way, uh, four, four <laughs> nested loop here. Um, let's see. I'm going to try to fix this up a little bit in terms of, no. This is supposed to auto-format, but it doesn't. So, anyway. So now that we've defined this array, now we should actually be able to uh, just print it very, very simply. Um, can I? I think I can do this because my other eye is now dead. So, I should be, well, actually, why don't I just do this? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Row equal zero, row less than 40, row plus plus. The other right section steps inside of the other one. Ye oh, actually, you're right. I, I need to declare this here, don't I? But I think I can redeclare this here because it's, uh, it dies inside that loop. I mean, you can declare it on top. True, and reuse it. Yes. Um, I'm just, because I don't believe this is going to work, I just want to, uh, <laughs> I just want to make sure it's going to work. So that's why I'm, and did I just say int prayer, prayer array? I think I meant, oh, we can get away with this, but I don't know if that's necessarily the best thing to do. And this has to be a space then. C, I think. For character? C for character. And now... Yeah. I, don't, I think there's something... I think the syntax... This is syntactically wrong. Let's see. Um, print array. Um... Implicit declaration of print, uh, I meant printf, of course. Control reaches end of non-void function. Oh, I'm sorry. This is still void. I meant to change this to be... <laughs> I didn't mean to change the function type. Interesting. Is that what you wanted? Something like that? Okay. That's actually important, but just... Yeah. Oh, okay. Three rows, five columns. Whoa, what the hell did you do, man? Uh, why does it work so perfect with five, three, but it doesn't do five? Yeah, and what, what are these funky characters that are showing up? That is really f wacky. That's really buggy. Okay, this is good. So, so you actually want this to go 
Uh, you want this to be... I need it the opposite. I need three high, five low. Okay. So let's see. Let me try one step at a time. Three by three. See what that does. Oh, oh, I see. Um, you figured it out? I changed the... Uh, I changed the... This here should be five. No, this is three. This one is five, right? Yeah. But I didn't change the array. Oh! Good. Oh, that's why we're getting these. Is that what you wanted? No, right? Okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I think let me, let me do this. It's going to be 40 rows and 24 columns. But let's see. Just one. Okay. Go ahead and do this and let me take a look here. So. Wait. Uh, so we have 24 rows and 40 columns. Yeah. Okay. This is not going to work, but I'm going to figure out why. It's hang on, right here, right here. Hang on, hang. This is close to what I want. Yes, without Just the funny characters and something is going. Yeah. And the one problem here is going to be it's going to go sort sort of off the edge of the screen, but I don't think that's a huge deal. Um. Let's see. It should be the, the array lines somewhere. Row zero to three. Three to four. Three to three. Um, because if you were, I think. Hang on. We're going to get to the bottom of this. Yes. Or we're going to forget to put in a semicolon. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, five. There should be a way to get. There should be like a scroll bar over here. Oh, you know what? Because I'm not quite. There we are. Row call, row call. So rows should stay between zero and twenty-four, which they do, and columns should say. Now wait a minute. Do you see a problem? Uh, this is only going to twenty. Uh, it should reach a less, I think. Sorry, which one are we talking about? Like the column? Yes. I, it's sometimes it goes to 29. Okay, let's see. Int call equals 5 times j. Call less than this. So the rule. Yeah, let me quick let take a look here. So uh, it goes row call. So the row should remain. Z whoa. I mean, yeah, that's not right. It's definitely not right. Um. Uh, that's a hundred percent out of numbers. Yeah. Well, not only that, but um. Why is that doing that? I mean. Well, you know what? I'm gonna print I and J as well, but I mean. I mean, unless there's something very seriously wrong here, this should not be happening. So let's see what this does. And I'm going to go back up there, the very top here. Zero, 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 zero. Uh, call, print array, row call, equals I plus two. It's almost like someone's doing an assignment inside here, which I don't think they are. Um, oh, wait, 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 wait. This ends up, yeah, this ends at the big loop, right? Yeah. I'm just fixing this up a little bit here, but yeah, I think we should be fine here. Okay, so we have I goes from 0 to 8, 0 to 7, J goes from 0 to 7. Um, oh, you know what? This would be actually better for debugging. I'm going to print I and J before they, we start looping th through row and column. Um, oh, do you think I'm reusing row and column improperly? Yes, I am. Hang on. I know it's wrong. See down here at the print? We didn't fix the... Uh, 
We fixed the, the other one. Didn't fix this one. That would this look good if this actually... This seems a great plan. Except it's still... Three, it's yeah. breaking, it's, it's breaking, but let's... Let me... Click. Unfortunately, because this is text, I don't think this is going to... Uh, no, this, this is... This is okay. Oh, right, right. I'm trying, I'm trying to run the big screen. Um... See, this isn't printing any of the dots that I thought it would print. Oh, actually, hang on, it might. Come on. Okay, this is just weird. That's not supposed to have happened. Um, let's see. Okay, this is good. I'm, I'm just saying that it'd be nice to see it in sort of a... Uh, in eight, you know, in the, if, you, if you go over here, you can get to the full page. But I don't think it's going to print out the full page. Let me see what it does if I do this, real quick. I can see it on your stream, it's not always so I can see it. There. That's how it should look, right? Yes. Now it seems great. Yeah. Okay. On your stream I can see it right now. Okay, good. So I just wanted to get it to full screen for you. Um, okay, fantastic. Well, that's part one. Oh, uh, let's see. Um, now, the only problem here is we said print squares. This assumes every square is empty. I assume that if the square has something in it, uh, it's going to print a little bit differently. Yes. Okay. So... It should print mm -hmm. everything the same. Mm -hmm. Unless there is something... If there is something only on the playable squares... Right. Which this will be a bit confusing because it's inverted. Oh, you, sorry. Um, wait, wait, I, th I thought we fixed it. Actually, the white ones. Okay. Is that good or bad? That's how it should be. I mean, okay. That's right. Okay, looks correct the way it is. Okay. So, the playable scores are the white ones. In other words, where we put the dot. Yeah, you could do that, too, if you wanted it the other way. If we try this... Yeah. It's exactly how the example is. Let's see. Okay. That's how you want it? How it's Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so now, if there's something in the uh, in the square, how are we going to print that? And I think that we can also take care of in here by basically after we set the print array, we can look to see if spot is covered and then do something with. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. That's why I wanted to have the the spots. The array for spots. Um, when it was zero, it just printed the, the dots. Right. As if there was nothing there. Okay. If it was one, it printed the white pieces, or the double, or whatever. If it was black, it should be on two, and it printed the B or something. Okay. Does it print a B for the whole thing, or just in like the middle, the middle row, middle column? No, just the middle. Just the middle. Okay. The rest should be the dots. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, for row, for call. So over here, we could say if spots of i, j equal equal 1, print array, uh, let's be careful here, 3 times i, oh, hang on. 3 times i plus 1, because that's going to be the row, and then 5 times j plus 2 equals, uh, was it a or b? Or what? what, what, what? Plus one. It was 1? No, 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 here. It was plus 2, but no, 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 no. See, 3 times i plus 1, this is different. There's parentheses here and there's not parentheses here. 3 times i gives you the top row, 1 row lower. 5 times j is the left column, plus 2 yeah. gives you the middle column. So this is the middle column, middle row. So let me just quickly test this because so I, I'm paranoid about nothing ever working. Yeah, just put something, I'm going to test it real quick. Okay. So now I'm going to set spots 1, 1 to 1, and let's see if this actually works. It won't, but I mean, you know. Let's see. 
Yes, that didn't like that. Why? Oh, s no semicolon. There. Let me close off these ones that I keep creating. Let's do this. Hey, does that look the way you want it? Oh, you can look on my screen, actually, yeah. That's yeah? That, that may try to put so zero, zero. So, I'm sure it brings... Oh, the top left one? Yeah, that's exactly what I want. Okay. Okay. So now, I have to build a function that brings the first three rows. Hang on one second. Yes. but... That's just changing the... Okay, for some reason when I do it full screen, it's not... It's only giving me the first row. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, it's, it's okay. Um, so let's be a little bit nicer here. Do this. And then... Else if... equal equal two. Am I missing a um Yeah, sometimes this thing doesn't format great. And I think now this will close off this if statement. Let's see if this runs. Okay. I'm off by a I'm off by a Yeah, let me see if I can fix this. Let me see if we can fix this here. So this is the end of the else if. This is the end of the what? Hang on. I, I don't. Th I don't think my my parentheses are balanced. Hang on. Uh, there we go. Now we should be fine. Yeah. That's 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 fine. Okay. Um. So this print array is now actually accurate. Now the question is, can we make it more efficient? Uh, oh yeah, change some of the, the cells around. I don't, I mean, there's probably a way to make this more efficient. I don't know if we really need to though. Okay, let me look. I mean, doesn't have to be the beautiful code. Oh, I know, I know. I guess this is okay. I mean, a four, uh, um, uh, a loop that's nested four levels deep just seems really ugly to me. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, in theory, we could actually have this go from one to twenty-four, and then look at i um, i div three instead of having to go through this little rigmarole. And here we can look at I div five instead of having to go through this whole sort of. I, I don't think this is any more inefficient. We still have to go through uh, sixty-four times three times five, you know, prints, regardless. Yeah. So all right, let's leave it like this. I mean, it works. We're happy. And before I forget, you might want to do a download as zip, yeah. by the way. So you have a copy on your local machine in case something goes wrong. Now you need the initialization. We don't have to spend time with. We don't have to spend time with the initialization because that part is really easy. I can do that in five minutes. Okay, good. Uh, uh, so I don't spend all of your time. I have an infinite can amount of time. Can you help me now figure out? Can I? Can you figure? Can you help me figure out to now put the pieces to be able to hit each other because you need to hit the other player pieces like that. Right. So jump, jump the pieces. Yeah. Okay. To move it as well because I have to change. Right. Because I have to change the the last position to. Ah, look that thing. Right. Well, there's another else. Yeah, it's oh, but. 
Well, we don't need to do that. Because I have to erase the moves. Oh, very nice. Good. You're saying if we move, we don't want to leave it as a... Um, that shouldn't be a problem, though, because... That's well, you don't, shouldn't have to do that, though, because w when you do that, spots IJ will no longer be one or two. If it's zero, remember, we're redrawing the whole board every time. Oh, yeah. So, there's no... there's That's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. That's fine. Um, okay, so once we've initialized the pieces, we need to see whether one piece can jump over another, right? Yeah. Okay, and... Uh, so if you're the player who starts at the bottom of the board, um, are you, you're allowing for kings as well, right? King me, that sort of thing? Yes. But on this moment, I'm just trying to figure out the basic. Because okay. the, this is the final work of the chair. I don't know what you call it. Yeah. Final project? Okay. I have, to, I have various levels of finishing it. Right. The top level, it's to have it playable. You can hit the other player pieces. You can do like the, the king. Right. When you reach the bottom of the, the board, right. it can move really you know. Right. But for now, I just want the level one it's, that is, you can move the pieces. And you can play the game. Okay. Not very complicated. You just hit once because you have the, the move to hit twice if you can. Or oh yeah, twice. double double jumping. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but for now, I'm just looking for a single jump. Okay. Point. So then I can start thinking on the other one. Okay. Um. Now you've decided to make spots IJ identify what pieces at a given spot, right? Mm -hmm. What you might want to do is have like something like this. An array that keeps track of the position of each piece. instead of instead of trying to keep this might be easier because then when you move pieces around uh, you can just update these arrays and then we can replace this code here by a for loop through the whites and the blacks and just put them in the right positions okay so that would be my recommendation that seems a little bit easier to do um, so now uh, Make an arbitrary decision. Are the blacks or the whites going to start at the bottom? Uh, let me check the example. It's easier to fall. Okay, the blacks start at the bottom. Okay. Okay. So a black player can jump, a black checker piece can jump a white checker piece if two things are true. One is if you go uh, down one row, and one on either side of the column, there has to be a piece there to jump. And then if you go, uh, and if that's true, that yes. And then if the diagonal of, let's see, oh, and then it, oh yeah, and then it has to go uh, two up and two to the left, two up and two to the right. So if that's, spa those spaces, one of those is clear. And uh, so yeah, if you have minus one, minus one clear, and minus two, minus two clear. Uh, sorry, if you have minus one, one, minus one is a piece, and minus two, minus two is clear, you can jump. Similarly, if plus one, oh, hang on, minus one, plus one, and minus two, plus two have the same properties, you can jump. Okay. So, you, you know, let me suggest something here. Um, uh, let's see. You can never have more than 32 pieces on the board, right? For 
Um, because there's only 32 playable squares, right? 24. Well, the max is 24, that is the starting pieces. Uh, wait, so are you saying that you cannot gain pieces in checkers ever? Okay. You can only eat the other player pieces. Right. And if you reach the, the border, uh -huh. your own piece um, gets thrown back into the board on the same spot. So it turns into, uh, I don't know what's It called. turns into a king, but it doesn't... Uh, it's the, the king piece. But it doesn't uh, actually become more pieces. It just becomes a, a, dub uh, becomes a, a special piece. Yeah. Okay, so we really need... Um, a double piece. So there's only eight of each on the board. So what I would suggest you do here for spots... Um, it's not eight, it's twelve of each. It's uh, three rows. Twelve. Oh, didn't know that. Okay. Twelve of each. So... See, what would be nice is in spots, you have a, you have a int array here. You could just keep track of which pieces on that spot instead of whether it's just white or black. So equal i equals 7 means white piece 7 and then you can add 128 to it for black pieces. I mean you could add 12 to it but I'm not going to be oh let's just say 16 because we can never have 16. So that way you can not only know uh, what pieces are on the board, but you can know which piece is on the board. So if you want to be able to jump, you can check to see, you know, if you want to jump a piece, you, you can know which piece it is you're jumping. But, uh, why do, we have, do I need this? Uh, because we want to keep track... of the coordinates and the information here. Uh, because mm -hmm. if the... The zero one, it's one. It means that is a white. Correct. But how do you know where all the? Two, it means there is a blue. Okay. So how do you know where all the white uh, checkers are, though? So on the start, you send like twelve pieces. Right. Of each kind. Right. So from there. You just keep playing with the same pieces, so you never get settled. Right. Uh, so you don't have to... Okay. Uh, this seems... The problem is, I would like to sort of label the white pieces, white piece 1 through 12, or 0 through 11. Um... I mean, you're right. You do know where the white pieces are. The problem is, if you want to find them all, you have to loop all the way through that array, right? Yes. Uh, which maybe is not a bad thing. It's a small array. It's only 64 squares, of which half of them are unplayable. So maybe that's okay. Um, okay. All right. Okay, let's try it your way. I'm, I'm a little hesitant, but okay. You're programming very tightly, which is kind of nice, but at the same time, it's kind of weird. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, the next function we'd want to write is um, can jump, right? And what would we give can jump as an in? Hmm? Like bool. Oh, bool is it bool? Yeah. Um. It turned bool, but it's it says. It says what now? That should work. And not die. Yeah, we still need to assign it stuff. 
So for can jump, are we going to ask, um, when are we going to send this? Are we going to send it just like uh, two integers, i and j? Okay. Well, we'll call it X and Y for your benefit. Um, oh boy. So first of all, we need to make sure that there is a piece on X and Y, right? Um, and it actually depends. That is the entry level because when the player starts the, the round. Uh huh. He chooses which piece to go. And that's oh, the right, first right. Step on the input, so you don't need to. So we're assuming the. Need to consider that. Okay. So it already should be configured that way. Well, actually, we we can, but we're assuming that X and Y are given to us by the player. And actually, is the player also going to tell us which piece he yes. wants to jump? Yes. So why don't we add those as, as parameters as well? Um, we can, but like if he can't jump anything, right? The the uh, the turn should end. Uh, okay. Or should not be able to jump, so he only can walk. move. Right, he can only move t to a diagonal. Space. Okay. So the player gives us two numbers. One is the jumping, and the other is the one he wants to jump, right? Yes. Okay. So, uh, brother. I mean, the, the code is basically going to say if... Uh, oh, we actually know what spots is, don't we? So we want to say if spots x, y... Oh, what? Oh, right, right, because these are... We're just printing them as B and W. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, the white is 1, and the black is 2, right? Um, it, it doesn't matter, because we have to go... We have to do them both ways anyway. Actually, let's go ahead and call this... Um, let's actually go ahead and do the jump here if we can, and return false... If we'll return true if we successfully jump. Um, yeah. You can just say if it's equal to zero, to deny this. If it's not equal to zero, maybe sh makes it more plain. No, no, they have to be of opposite colors. You can't jump your own piece. I mean, you could say if spots x, y plus spots u, v equals 3, that would suffice, because the only way you can get 3 is by uh, adding 1 and 2. <laughs> but I think we need to take two cases into account here. So the first one is going to be white jumping black, or trying to jump black. Yes. Okay. Uh, you, I think you need brackets. You can't use commas in in. Can you? Yeah. Okay. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. Okay, so if this is um. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I'm just going to be obnoxious and put a space here. Okay. So now, if that's true, this isn't enough to jump. The other thing that has to be is um. Uh, let's see. Yes. Okay, so where'd you go? 
Oh, you put something in chat. Oh, are you there? According to this, you left, but yes. maybe you came back. Are you here? Uh, it's reconnected me for some reason. There we go. There you are. You're back. Okay, so we're going to be a little bit careful here. Um, black started bottom, and black's going to be two, and white's going to be one. Okay. There's something vaguely racist about all this, but I'll ignore it. Um, <laughs> Whites are one, and black start at the like bottom. The so black is the top. Yeah, the black start at the bottom, notice, and they're number two. So really very, very bad. <laughs> but uh, racial issues aside. Okay, so if this is the white guy trying to jump... <laughs> now I can't stop laughing. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, right, so if the, if the white guy is trying to jump the black guy... Oh, now I'm going to be... Uh, <laughs> you can change it to red if you want. No, we, we're going to have because then it's just going to be Chinese people. It's not going to get any better. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, if white's going to jump black. We're, we're just going to we're just going to reds and yellows. We're going to yeah. There you go. Chinese and Vietnamese fighting each other. That's Orientals. And we're we're going to we're just going to get over the white and black thing. It's going to be funny for a minute, and then we have to get over it. Okay, um, so the white goes, um, the white's at the bottom, no, the black's at the bottom of the board, so the white's at the top, so if the white is going to jump the black, the white has to be moving down, right? The row has to be greater. Yes, if the white wants to jump to the black. Yeah, it has to be that the black one is at a higher row number. Yeah. So if the black one is at a lower row number, we return false, right? You can't, that jump doesn't work. Okay. Mm -hmm. It still doesn't like the Boolean type for some reason. What, what do you mean it doesn't like it? It says unknown type. Are you running it? Let me run it, I guess. No. It just says oh, it does. Yeah, it does say unknown type Boolean. Boolean, probably is going to say no, I'm going to just go ahead and screw it. We're going to return int with zero meaning false and one meaning true. Uh, and maybe, okay, cool. Okay, so if, actually, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. We can do better than this. Um, actually, u has to equal x plus one, doesn't it? The only way you can jump if it's a, if it's a row below you. You can't jump if it's the same row as you, less than, or if it's two rows away, you can't jump either. Yeah. Okay. So... It has to be the row next to it. The one below it, right? Well, well first we're going to do the check for the, um... First we're going to do the check for the row, right? Mm -hmm. So if you is not equal to x plus one, it's you can't jump, right? Right. Okay, and now V. Um, and I think V can be one of two values. V can either be um, y plus one or y minus one, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So in other words v minus y must be equal to 1. Absolute value. Okay. Um, let's see. And let's see. Are we going to do some ch uh, some checks for legitimacy up here? Let's... Um... Do you see what I'm doing here? Mm -hmm. And this is only so we, we don't try to pr people don't try to jump off the edge of the board. Yes. But then we can just do it. It shouldn't be able because there is nothing on the top or the bottom. So when it looks for x plus one, it will find out. 
Uh, no, no, what could be... What, see, the problem is... Um, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, in fact... You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, right. So this is unnecessary and it's ugly. We need... I'm sorry, the check we actually need to make sure is that x plus 1 isn't bigger than 8. See what I'm saying? Um, yep, you're right. You're right. So, I think, I think, I know, I think the problem is, of course, x plus 2, it has to be less than 8, right? Because, it, let's say you're at the very, yeah, you're at the very edge of the board, you can't jump the last row because there's no row to jump into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And by the way, Let's go ahead and comment this out a little bit. Uh, if white can only jump next row, because uh, whites are coming down from the bottom, uh, from the top. Um, but you know what? We can be even more clever than this. Regardless of which color is jumping which color, uh, they can only be one column apart, right? Right, right. But I'm saying the column check for the columns, it doesn't matter who's jumping whom. Yeah. The column numbers have to be one apart, otherwise you can't do the jump. Yes, yes. Okay, and uh, let's see if we can make another column check here without having to worry about the direction of the rows. Um, so if V is greater than Y, you're trying to jump into row V plus 1, right? Sorry, column, column. If column V is greater than column vi, y, vi <laughs> then you are trying to jump into column V plus 1. And hang on. And let's actually do some commenting out because we're supposed to. Um, can only jump one column to left or right. Um, cannot jump beyond row zero, uh, column zero or column seven. So let's put that in there. So I guess what we're going to say is if, um, so the only situation that would occur in is if V is seven and Y is six, right? Mm -hmm. Or, so in other words, if you're in six and trying to jump to seven, then you're trying to jump beyond column uh, 7, which is impossible. And what's the other condition here? Uh, y is 2 and... Uh, v is 0, Ypsilon 1, maybe. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, y is 1 and V is 0? Well, it's this is on zero, and uh, this one's to it is on one. It can jump over it. Right, but if the the jump the piece that's jumped over can never have uh you know what this is actually even simpler than I thought. Sorry, we don't need this. If the piece you're trying to jump, hmm. oh I'm sorry, no it is. So if your if your piece is in row six and the piece you want to jump is in row 7, that jump would end you up out of bounds, right? Yes. So what is the other condition that, would, that could happen? And if the piece you're trying to jump with is 1 and the other piece is 0, that would end you up in row negative 1. So if either of these cases is true, uh, we want to return false. So let's see. I'm trying to keep as much of this code uh, 
outside of the condition that white's jumping black or black's jumping white. So, let's see. So. Now, in this case, we could actually say We can't actually do anything about this yes, bec yet, because we, we're not sure you can do the jump. But if the jump does succeed, the destroy column, the piece that gets destroyed is uh, V, right? Well, that's the one you're jumping over, right? So that's the piece that goes away. So the destroy column will be V, right? Yes. Okay. And now, um, the destroy row. well, no, right. We this still we still don't know that you can actually make the jump. We're just sort of saying if you can make the jump, we're going to keep track of these numbers, and then when we're done, we'll actually do it. If we if we actually somehow get to where it's going to be true, we will go ahead and update stuff. But right now, we're just saying if. So if you were able to make the jump, you'll destroy what's in V. And what will the new column for uh, for uh, the jumping piece be? It'll be Y plus, or it'll be, um, let's see. One, right. I'm trying to see if there's a clever way of, of saying that. So V minus W is going to be plus or minus one. Um, it's going to be actually two times that, right? If you jump one to your right, you're going to end up two columns to your right of your original location. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's going to be the current position. Mm, let's see. So if... Is that correct? So if V is bigger than Y, V is one bigger than Y, which is the only way it can be bigger, uh, Y has now gone up by two. The column has gone up by two. If it's smaller, it's got gotten down by two. And you know what that lets us do, actually? I think this, we can actually now say, just recall, uh, We know that you can't have a new call value that's outside the bounds. And I think this actually gets rid of the, these lines here, because these lines here just check for that. I mean, in an ugly way, they check for that. So keep track of, co of column that will be destroyed. Add new column for jumping piece. What? No, that's for this particular destruction, right? For this particular jump, when we're done... So, you will do the, the selective one inside the same, the same function? What do you mean? You have to select the, the black and the white, which is it. In uh, right, right, but that's, for the column number, I'm oh, 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 I see what you're saying. Um, if it was a global, you can just read another. No, I think this is correct, actually, because regardless of which direction you're jumping in, your column number will change uh, plus or minus one, right? And you're you are doing V minus Y. Right. So if that you are eating the plus side, it should be V plus Y. No. 
V plus Y it would be like, if column three is eating column four, then the new column will be five, right? Okay, actually, let me do something real quick. We don't need to keep track of the destroy column because we already have it as a variable. All I want to know is if the new column yeah. that the piece, uh, the XY piece ends up in is going to be plus or minus two of, of its original, of its original value, right? Yes. Okay. And if that is actually um, outside the board, then you can't make that jump. Okay. Yes. Um, so now, let's see, keep track of column that we, d oh, so actually we're just going to keep track of new column for jumping piece. Because V already, we already have the, uh, V already tells us what's going to be destroyed. Column for jumping piece, if jump is successful. Because we don't know yet that the jump can work, we're just sort of saying that, uh, if it works, this is what's going to happen. Okay. So now... Uh, let's see. Um, right, right. Okay, and here it says if spots x, y equals x, one. Um, and so this is going to be white jumping black. The black player has to be, the black row has to be one higher. And let's see. And the other thing that has to be true is that the new row, the new row will be x plus two, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I need to declare that outside because otherwise I will have a. Uh, Um, this is white jumping black, we said. Let's put that in there. No, I think it's going to be negative, right? Because black, the row numbers get lower as you go up. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, you're right, sorry. White starts at the top. We're going down. You're right. The row number will be X plus 2. Right? Sorry. So are we agreed on this? Okay. So the one thing we have to do is make sure, um, oh, okay, wait, 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 wait. Uh, there's one other important condition we forgot to check here. The new column that it's going to jump to has to be currently blank, right? Yes. Oh, actually, we can't check that until we know the new row. So never mind. So we'll make a to-do here. Yeah. And if the new position isn't blank, you can't do that kind of jump. All right. I'm almost tempted to put error messages here, like, trying to jump piece not one column away from you. Um, your jump would move your piece off the board, etc. Uh, you are jumping, um, you can only jump high w a rows that are exactly one higher than you, that sort of thing. So new row equals x plus 2. Um, Oh, you know what? We can actually put that. We can put that out here too. Okay. So, is there anything else I'm missing here? Uh, you maybe should check. 
if the spots X, Y have anything on it. Right, but see I'm doing an, uh, an else if here, so I kind of want to keep this code as minimal as possible. So now we need it the other way. And then we're going to do that check down here. Make new position is blank and check for not off edge of uh, not off edge of board. So we're computing what the new position would be. Okay, I'm going to make this a little bit wider because I hate when stuff goes off the edge of the screen like that. So in this case, if it is now black jumping white, the um, u has to equal x minus one, right? You can only jump one that's above you. And then in this case, the new row will be x minus 2, right? Okay. So now... Okay. Let's, I'm going to make this a little bit cleaner here. So this is... Um, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna try to put this if white jumping black, and here it's gonna be jumping white. Actually, that's black jumping. Don't worry, we're gonna add our checks here in just a minute. Now, finally, if neither of those cases is true, we know that you can't do, you can't jump your own piece, you can't jump a blank piece. Uh, so, if neither of these conditions is true, you can't do the jump, right? Okay, so now here, new position must be on board, right? It still has to be on the board. So, right, if it's uh, above seven or if the new row is above seven or below zero, then you can't do the jump. Okay, so that's one thing we have to check, and we now need to make sure that the um, the new position where they're jumping to is blank, right? Yes. So if spots new row new call not equal to zero, return zero, right? Mm -hmm. Do you want to get some sleep? Sorry, say that again? I, I will need to sleep, so. Okay, why don't we go ahead and call it now and we can pick this up later? Later should be tomorrow. Tomorrow, that's what I mean, tomorrow. It's getting late for me too here, I'm pretty old. I'm usually available afternoon my time, which will be unfortunately I think 7 p.m. your time. It's 7.48 p.m. here right now. 7.48 in the evening. I'm seven hours behind you. Um, okay, sorry, that was you. Uh, your time or my time? So what... It's easier if I send you. Yeah. Why don't you send me something when you're ready tomorrow and we'll figure it out, okay? Okay, and... Send you a message on Discord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, let me, go, ahead and, let me go ahead and get us off the stream because I don't think the rest of this needs to be on stream. Okay, everyone, thanks for watching. Two and a half hour stream. I'm going to be breaking some records. Bye for now.